Hello everyone, this is Robert Landau with Live Life Well TV. I am the Live Life Well TV host and I am honored to be with you here today. This is another episode of Health and Wellness Tips and I am also honored to welcome back a special guest who appears on this series quite often. Her name is Marianne Murphy. She is the Community Engagement Manager for a wonderful company called Dispatch Health. Welcome back, Marianne. Thank you so much for having me back, Robert. I really look forward to um, having the opportunity to talk about health and wellness with you. Yes, I agree. But before we even do that, can you give us a quick uh, encapsulated version of, in case folks have not watched previous episodes where you have appeared of Health and Wellness Tips, tell us just a little bit about the company that you represent, Dispatch Health. Absolutely, Robert. So Dispatch Health is an urgent care to the home, essentially model. Um, and we send a nurse practitioner along with an EMT to the home to treat acute and urgent care needs in the comfort and convenience of your home. And we are open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week, including the holidays. So you never have to worry what's going to happen to me on Friday evening at five o'clock on a three-day weekend. Um, you can contact us. Our information will be, uh, I believe, at the end of this session. So you can contact us and we will come right to your door and treat you for your urgent and acute care need. And we'll send the clinical notes back to your primary care physician to keep everybody inside the loop. So, I mean, that sounds perfect to me. So really, in a way, it's an emergency room alternative if you're in your apartment or you're in your home, your, your house or town home or whatever it might be then you think you might need to go to the emergency room, but an emergency room visit might not be necessary for whatever might be wrong with you. Then you call Dispatch Health and then a doctor comes to you, right? Yes, absolutely. So we'll triage over the phone, making sure that what you're experiencing is appropriate to be seen at home. We'll never assign a clinical team to you if what you're experiencing is one life-threatening or time-sensitive. Um, and it is a, a acute care trained nurse practitioner or physician assistant along with an EMT. So it's always a two person team um, and they'll come right to your door. And again, we'll triage over the phone to make sure what you're experiencing is not life threatening or time sensitive. And our goal is to get to you in two hours or under. We're averaging an hour and a half um, before we're on scene. And we spend about 45 minutes with each patient, which is a great quality time that you don't usually get in the emergency room. And the other thing is that we built insurance. So we accept Medicare and most commercial insurances as well. It's a wonderful, wonderful service. I love it. I had no idea that type of thing existed until you appeared on the show. <laughs> so there you go. It's always a learning experience. And uh, we have addressed uh, the, the topic of today a bit before, but in case anybody watching does not know what the topic happens to be, let me demonstrate it. <laughs> Ta -da! There you go. Anyway, thanks everybody. We hope you enjoyed this. No, uh, <laughs> this uh, episode is called uh, Tips to Stay Hydrated. And this to me, Marianne, is an extremely important topic. Extremely important because I think a large part of the population, basically in any country, is not hydrated enough, you know? So um, start wherever you want, because the topic is so broad, we could do five episodes <laughs> of this, but where would you like to start? Absolutely, well, a lot of people ask, well, how do I, not, not how do I stay hydrated, but what do I drink to stay hydrated? Um, because, you know, fluid in, fluid out, what's going to, um, you know, stay in my system the longest, um, and how can I replenish those electrolytes if I lose them, if I'm dehydrated? So the best thing to drink um, to stay hydrated consistently is water. 
However, if you are exercising or if you're coming out, you know, off of um, out of a virus or you're not feeling well, replenishing those electrolytes is also really, really important. You can replenish those by um, apple juice, um, by Gatorade, um, by Pedialyte. So my preference is usually um, if you're just not feeling well and you just kind of want to up that electrolyte, you could do water and Pedialyte. That's going to definitely help. Um, and then also apple juice. Gatorade is great as another additional substitute, but it does have some other sugar in it as well. So when you think about Gatorade, you're like, yeah, I'm going to get rehydrated. Um, but there's a lot of other things in Gatorade that it doesn't necessarily hydrate you and it replenishes electrolytes as quickly as the two prior. So Pedialyte being the first one, um, and then also apple juice. I tend to give those, you know, to, to young children um, as a substitute for water to keep them, you know, hydrated as well. But just for daily hydration, water is always the best thing to have. Um, if you have a difficult time drinking six to eight to 10 bottles of water, usually we want that six to eight bottles a day. If you're having a difficult time um, drinking that much water, what we suggest is mixing it with your favorite fruit juice. So you're still getting that. So maybe half cranberry and half water. Um, also, if you're just having a difficult time, any liquid that's not going to be a diuretic or a dehydrator, such as coffee or wine. So even a soda, I say that as I cringe a little, um, even soda has a, a certain percentage of hydration. So if you're going to you know, not drink anything, at least, you know, try to mix it like one bottle of water to one Diet Coke. And again, you know, swap them out. If you're having a difficult time, again, any hydration that's not going to dehydrate you is better than nothing. Um, in the winter time, if you are concerned about not drinking a lot of water, soup can actually also hydrate you as well. So even having um, a liquid like soup, is going to help continue to hydrate you. Okay, very interesting. So when, you, when you're saying um, six to eight bottles of water, I would assume these are the smaller plastic uh, bottles that are almost like a, a, a glass worth each, right? Because anything larger, six to eight, my goodness, you'd float out to the, the Atlantic <laughs> Ocean, right? <laughs> yes, I think they're 16 ounces. So yeah, you know, six, to eight 16 ounce bottles of water will keep you pretty hydrated throughout the day. And, and you know, with me, I can always tell, although I bet there, there are situations where a lot of people don't know that they're dehydrated, but for me, my body usually will tell me, I'll start to feel the telltale uh, symptom, very dry, and then I'll start to cough quite a bit and and that's my body's uh way of telling me drink six to eight bottles or glasses of water and i just personally i like to keep it very pure you know it's just water for me but i guess these other drinks can work too what about for people that really enjoy a glass of wine or certainly have coffee uh every morning would that count so unfortunately, coffee is a diuretic. Um, so when you drink coffee, it actually goes right through you. Instead of hydrating you, it, it can actually dehydrate you. Um, the same thing with wine. Um, instead of hydrating you, it actually will continue to dehydrate you. Um, that's why when they, you know, they say don't don't drink and go swimming or don't go in a spa and have a glass of wine with it because um, those two together can be a very dangerous situation and you get more dehydrated as time goes on. That being said, it's okay to have your cup of coffee in the morning or your glass of wine at night. Totally normal and acceptable. Just in the, during the daytime, make sure you are hydrating as well. Um, again, that more cups of coffee you have, the more it's going to go through you and also, you know, continue to dehydrate you. So um, during the summertime, I suggest sticking to one cup of coffee as we get, you know, um, further into the wintertime and we're not 
too concerned about sun sickness or heat stroke, um, you know, you can probably go to have like two cups of coffee. Again, everybody's metabolism is a little different. So um, when you are, you know, having coffee or wine, always, you know, do what your body feels is, is okay. Um, and if you're concerned about um, the amount of coffee or wine that you're drinking, always seek the counsel of your primary care physician as well. Makes perfect sense. So we are uh, taping this episode of Health and Wellness Tips in the height and heat of the summer. Uh, this episode may be seen during other times during the year, but right now, if we did this interview outside, we'd be sweating like crazy. And I would <laughs> not be wearing this jacket. So what do you do uh, in, for example, the heat of the summer? I would think that you'd be prone to want to drink even more water or do you do you change the level of hydration based on what's going on outside i would say especially with our senior population uh, you don't have to to alter how much you drink during the summer unless you're extremely active outside um you know you can always add into the regimen a popsicle or two if you're not diabetic or a sugar-free popsicle that also will uh, continue to hydrate you too um, and it's also kind of a nice treat. That being said, um, with our senior population, if you're going to go out and exercise, um, try to do it either at the coolest times of the day. So the first thing in the morning um, when you wake up is going to be significantly cooler or in the evening. We don't want to go out during the heat of the day. And regardless of what time you go out, it is important to wear sunscreen and also to wear a hat. Um, so some sort of face covering and a head covering um, because again that sun is pretty brutal here in Houston and we want to make sure that if you're going to go out the best thing to do is again in the morning is going to be the coolest time because you've had all of that nighttime to cool that you know the, the climate and the weather around you down. Just even a couple degrees makes a significant difference or if you're not a morning you know, person, you can go in in the evening, um, just, you know, closer to that cooler time. Um, try to stay away from those peak times because that's really when you're going to um, experience sun sickness and potential heat stroke. Um, and that's when it becomes a significantly dangerous time for anybody, but especially our senior population. I really appreciate you uh, mentioning that, Marianne, and here's why, because uh, particularly during COVID, when residents can't get out of their communities uh, or their homes. Uh, I will pull into a parking lot of a community and see some residents who are taking a mid-afternoon walk in the parking lot, you know, with their stroller and such. And I, like you were uh, highlighting, I would urge caution with doing that because the problem is, so you want to go outside, you've been cooped up in your apartment or your uh, house all day or maybe all week and you just have to get out so you're going to do it now, you can handle the heat, all this other stuff, but the, the danger of that is, and, and I see it a lot, is that so they'll go for a walk in the parking lot, then they want to go a little further, maybe halfway down the block. And it's probably halfway down the block that they realize, you know what, this probably wasn't a great idea. And I'll be standing in the lobby of, of some uh, residential communities and a resident will just come back <laughs> after yeah. going for a short, very brief walk uh, in the middle of the day, and they're just all flush and out of breath. Uh, so everybody watching this, really, if you do feel the need to go out and get some air, as Marianne is saying, really just make sure it's the right time of day. You, you don't want to do anything to jeopardize your health and, and um, go on that path, you know? So... Um, probably not too much more we need to say. I think the message is, is very brief, but incredibly important. Uh, and, and to me, Marianne, I, I would think that because this is what I need to remember. I don't hydrate myself like I should each and every day. And for me, the, the main tool to do that is water. 
Uh, I don't need anything, you know, more than that, but I can't seem to get it into me at the frequency you suggest each and every day. Um, any tips about that? Well, Can you absolutely. help me? Can you help me? <laughs> help you, help you. Um, again, any of those um, substitutes, even aloe vera juice, um, is going to give you some hydration. Um, if you're not going to drink the water, you know, again, if you're getting it from something that's not going to dehydrate you, um, such as a diuretic or, you know, alcohol, and that's going to continue to hydrate you. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, we always want to go back to water, but if you have um, coconut water or if you have aloe vera juice or any other juice, anything to get into your system um, to continue it to hydrate it to let your organs function at a normal rate when you get dehydrated it can uh, cause it can wreak some major ha um, havoc on your body um the other thing to be able to identify if you are um you know hydrated or not hydrated is one you're going to feel a little dehydrated you're going to feel lethargic you're going to get tired if you've been walking you're going to be sweating you're going to be flushed um if you continue to not you know say so you you went for a walk in the middle of the day you're feeling flushed you're you're getting sweaty make sure you go inside um get to a cool area let your body cool off um get back to a normal um state um, get that temperature regulated, and then hydrate. So I, I always have a Pedialyte in my refrigerator just for those odd chances of that happening. Um, but start taking something with some electrolytes in it relatively immediately to get your body back to feeling normal and stable. The other thing is, um, after you've exerted that much energy, you could just have some low blood sugar too. So sometimes just having some orange juice might perk you up a little bit too. So that's a little tip as well. That is great. And you know, there are a lot of people who don't like the taste of water. They don't like to drink water. So I think it's also wonderful that you have highlighted throughout this episode uh, some very good alternatives to just drinking straight water. Well, this is great. I have one more thing to do because this is how much you have motivated me in this episode. Watch. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Oh, wait, I'm not done. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think we need to do another episode on what to do if you drink too much water, but we'll save that for another episode. We can talk about that another time. But yeah, there you go. But that was, that was very refreshing, actually. And I can feel, because I didn't drink water today, how much my body needed it. So Marianne, as always, thank you for uh, your presence and your knowledge and your care and your concern. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on another episode of Health and Wellness Tips. Anything you want to say before we close? Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. And thank you, Robert, for allowing me to be on today. I really oh. appreciate it. My goodness. And folks, if you would like to learn more about Dispatch Health or you want to call them, uh, if you should have an immediate issue and you don't think it's necessarily emergency room worthy, or even if it is, they will let you know over the phone or at a, a visit after that consultation. So this has been Marianne Murphy appearing with us today. She is the Community Engagement Manager for Dispatch Health. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to seeing you on another episode of Health and Wellness Tips on Live Life Well TV. This has been Robert Landau. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.